Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 6 of our understanding docker for windows video series. And in this video we will be talking about installing internet information server on Hyper-V containers. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 5 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. So while you are not here, I pulled the internet information server image from hub.docker.com and you can see that I am pulling the docker image of the nano server IIS tag. So you can see that there are so many tags available. If you go in here, there are tags for nano server, nano server this version, latest, Windows Server Core, something like that. And I am pulling this because the size is only 325 MB. So I am just pulling it something like this. So docker pull Microsoft IIS colon nano server so this is representation for the tag that you can pull right so everything is right here available which is great and right now we are going to try and see if we can launch the internet information server in our machine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start the is image so docker images let's see what are the images we have right now we have a new image microsoft slash is right and you can see that there's a tag nano server. By default, if you don't specify the tag, it is gonna pull the latest tag, but if you're gonna run the nano server tag, then you need to specify that. So let me quickly show you what I really mean. So if I go to the Docker run, and if I do a detach mode execution for the Microsoft IS, and if I hit enter, you can see that it is gonna find the latest tag of the nano server and then it's going to pull that and it's going to be in huge size actually it's going to pull the 4.07 gb which is nothing but the windows server core image and that's going to be useless for me at least for this demonstration for the hyper v containerization uh, which we'll discuss more in our upcoming videos on our windows server containerization so i'm going to stop it for now rather we can actually run the one which we have downloaded from the hub.docker.com. So I'm going to run this image, the nano server tagged image. So I'm going to run that. But before I run that, I also need to specify the port for the internet information server. So if it really doesn't make any sense, if you go to this particular website, you can see for running this particular IIS, you can either specify the Docker file. Once again, Docker file is something which we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course. Don't worry about it yet. If you come over here, if you want to run this particular image, you need to specify the port so that it can be exposed into your uh, host machine, right? And you can specify the name and all those things. All right, so let's go here. So I don't, I'm not going to really specifying the name here. Rather, I'm going to specify the port. And once again, this port, the name, and all those stuff we have already discussed in our understanding the ABC of Docker video series and of, of our Exit Automation channel. So please go ahead and watch there. So I'm going to expose the port pretty much exactly how they have specified. So 8000 for my host port and 8000 for the internal container port. And I'm going to hit enter. You can see that it is going to be running this particular image in a detached mode. So it is creating an ID and it's taking some time to create. There you go, it's created pretty fast, not that bad. And now if I want to access this particular internet information server, how do I access? Can I access something like a local host? No. But if I want to specify this particular port of this particular image, but I need to know what is the host name, right? So if I just do docker ps hyphen a, so whether the host name is this? No, right? Because you can see that the port is zero, the IP address is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.8000 and that's not really making any sense. So in order to access this, remember in our previous video, we did something like the docker inspect, right? I'm going to use the same command. It's very, very handy. And I'm going to call the EA4. I'm going to hit enter. And remember this IP address we saw in our previous video? I'm going to use this IP address. This is the IP address of this container which is running. So I'm going to copy this IP address. And this IP address is very helpful for me right now. So if I go in here and if I just ping this particular IP address, you can see that I could able to ping the particular container 
from my host machine, which means I can also ping this particular machine to connect the internet information server, which is actually running right now. So if I go here and if I put this particular IP address and if I hit enter, great. Now I can see that there is an internet information server running into that particular container and it's working, which is great. And it is really a dream come true for me because in our previous videos, we were using the Apache web server on a Linux environment. And I was actually waiting for this containerization to happen for Windows. And it's really a great job for Microsoft team and the Docker team who collaborated and worked for two years to make this happen. And now I can see that my internet information server is actually running on a Windows container. And you can just spin this up in a fraction of second and I, I can just keep on creating internet information server as quickly as possible with just one line of code docker run that's it and now i can put this particular image even in the cloud in the azure cloud and then i can make this run happen and everything is going to be happening instantly i don't really have to see if the virtual machine is going to be created it's going to spin up all those things those things are going to be completely gone using this containerization platform and you can see that I can easily access this particular internet information server of that particular container and the IP address are automatically being assigned. You can also use the DHCP if you have in your organization to assign the IP address for these containers automatically instead of the IP address being assigned from the gateway right now. Right. So those are the networking concepts, networking isolations we will be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, guys, this is really cool. You can see that we have spinned up an internet information server from a container and we connected that particular internet information server into our host machine. And it's super awesome. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.